Welcome back to Arc Tutorials and this is the testing concept series. Today we are at part 2 of this particular series and today we will learn about manual testing. There are a lot of questions, there are a lot of misconceptions, there is a lot of doubts related to manual testing. We will learn everything about it, we will learn, we'll talk about the career growth, we will talk about the kind of work that is done. We'll also talk about the skill set that is required to grow your career in manual testing. Let's get started. So what will you learn today? In today's episode, you will learn about the modes of testing. I'll explain them in a little bit more detail. We will see how to perform a manual testing. We'll talk about some of the myth. We'll talk about some of the technical skills, non-technical skills and career growth options. Let's get started. First, Let's talk about the modes of testing. There are mainly two modes of testing applications. The first is manual testing. The second is automation testing. Now a lot of folks gets confused between the types of testing and modes of testing. Don't get confused on that. There are only two modes of testing which is manual testing and automation testing. But when you talk about types of testing, there are close to 30 plus types of testing that you can do. Some of which are black box testing, white box testing, smoke testing, alpha testing, beta testing, UAT testing and so on and so forth. We will cover all of that as part of the series. So stay tuned for that. But for today's um, episode and for today's learning, we are focusing on two main things. What are the different modes? That is manual and automation. Now let's talk a little bit about manual testing. Manual testing is done in person by clicking through the application or interacting with the software and APIs with the appropriate tooling. Manual testing is a type of software testing in which test cases are executed manually by a tester without any using any automation tools. The purpose of manual testing is to identify the bugs, issues and defects in the software application. Software testing is one of the most primitive technique of all testing types and it helps us find critical bugs in the software application. In short, if I have to explain it to you in one line, what is manual testing? You should say that it's a type of testing where all the tests are performed manually and we make sure that there are no defects or bugs in the application. The application's requirements are fulfilling with what was designed. Now manual testing is very expensive as it requires someone to set up an environment locally, execute the test themselves, which is time consuming process. Manual testing often lead to prone to errors, right? There can be, let's say you're building and testing a financial application. There can be thousands of use cases that can be in both happy path as well as a negative path. Testing all of them manually can be really difficult as the the QA or the tester has to come up with all the use cases, test data and much much more. That's that's little so chances are that somebody may miss out some use cases which leads to errors or defects. Now manual testing how to perform it right so a particular QA or a, or a tester will first read understand the requirements or the documentation right in if you talk about in agile context you will have to read through the user story and understand what is the expected requirement of it then you'll have to draft some test cases with test data now let's say a test case is test whether user is able to log in now this can have multiple test cases like if we provide wrong username password user should not log in if I leave the password field empty, it should give us a validation error and so on and so forth. We will also need to have some test data. For example, if I enter an invalid email address, if I enter an invalid phone number, right? Those are the test data that you have to create. Then you have to review those use cases with your team lead or with client as applicable. You have to execute them manually and you would do that on a dedicated region that is QA region, right? Mostly all the things will have all the developers and team members will have different environments to work with. Developers will work in dev region 
QA will work in the QA website or QA region. UAT will do in the UAT region. Now, during the course of execution, when you come across bugs or defects, you are expected to log them into some kind of a um, tool or a system, right? Mostly, if you are using Agile, you would use Jira, version 1, etc. So basically, you report the bugs in those systems. Those systems, the, the team, Agile team would then review those defects, try to reproduce them if they are valid, and then they would be assigned to development team for fixing, right? The process goes on. So this is how the cycle of testing goes on. You get the requirements, you get the user story, you create use cases, you create test data against it, you review them with your lead or with your client, and then execute them, report bugs. Now, some of the myth, right? Let's talk about some of the myths because uh, I hear these a lot when I talk or when I meet people. So one of the common myth is that anybody can do manual testing, right? That's the common myth that a lot of people talk about and which is incorrect at many levels. Number one, uh, anybody can do manual testing. Of course, if you just tell them to test it, they may do it. But will they be able to do it as efficiently as a QA or manual tester? I can 100% assure you, no. The reason being that it has to do with the logical thinking, analytical thinking. Also, it comes with experience that the use cases they see. So myth number one is anyone can do manual testing. That's not really correct statement. Myth number two, testing ensures 100% defect free product. Now, this is another misconception that people have that if you just do manual testing your product is defect or bug free which is not like i said earlier there would be thousands of use cases around a certain module or a feature chances are in manual testing you will miss out on few so it is not 100 percent defect free misconception number three automated testing is more powerful than manual testing now this is again a myth because automation testing will not do anything on its own we need to implement those scripts. So what I'm trying to get to is automation testing is powerful, yes, but when you compare it with manual testing, you have to implement those. So that's a myth and misconception. Now, fourth one is my favorite, which is testing is an easy job, right? And that's really not true because at the end of the day, if something goes wrong the QA or the testing team gets pulled up because they did not catch those bugs or defects so it's a risky job it's there is a lot of things at stake they have to test the entire system entire module entire functionality end-to-end -end, and it's really really complex job to do that work testing is only done by QA team and not developers or BA now this is another misconception that a lot of developers have and they do not learn about testing Testing is done by everybody in the team. You have to test what you have implemented, what you have designed. You cannot leave everything to QA team and say that, no, it's their job to do it. That's where unit testing comes into picture for developers, right? So testing is not only done by QA team, it's done by everybody on the team. Testing team does not need any training, agile tools or processes. This is yet another misconception. Testing team as part of the Agile is as good as the development team. They also have the same requirements of understanding the tools, frameworks, tools, processes, and much more. Yes, some of the QA team may not require the technical framework in-depth knowledge like developers may do, but testing team has their own frameworks, has their own processes, Agile tools to learn. So saying that they do not need training, they do not need Agile tools, is a misconception and wrong statement. I hope I clear all the myth around manual testing. If you have any, please drop them in the comment section. Now let's talk about uh, some of the technical skills that are required for manual testing. Now, as if you want to make a career in manual testing as a tester, you need to have basic understanding and knowledge of SQL and databases. Again, you don't have to learn about how to optimize a query, how to improve the performance and all that. 
but yes you should be able to know the basic of sequels like tables rows select query insert update delete joins and likes of that again you don't have to d dwell into too much detail of complex scenarios but you should be able to work around with basic knowledge the manual testing team should learn and and master the agile tools because they have to manage their test cases test data tickets they have to follow the kanban and scrum boards so they should be able to they should be familiar with all the agile tools that are used in the development uh, process basic understanding of system knowledge uh, like windows linux mac ubuntu uh, that is because you might want to set some variables system variables you might want to install some software you might want to use some basic tools which are installed on your machine so you will need some basic understanding of systems last which is i think is really excellent tool for manual testing is the microsoft office 365 you will definitely need to work with ms excel outlook which is your email calendar ms teams right collaboration te tools to on your day to day job so these are the technical skills that are required for manual testing now let's talk about some of the non technical skills that are required some of the non technical skills are logical and analytical skills right how you think how you analyze the problem statement how you break it down how you approach a particular given scenario those are your logical and analytical skills now the good news is these can be learned over a period of time with experience you must have good communication skills both written and verbal right again this is something that you improve on a day to day basis as you work along time management and time time tracking skills is very very important for a manual qa because during like i said manual testing takes time so you need to be a good at planning your work that i am dedicating this many hours to complete this work so you need to be efficient in managing your time and your work one of the key things that i look for in manual testing when we do hiring is the positive attitude and being a team player okay if somebody starts with a negative attitude that testing is not for technical or it's not my job i am not i am not interested that that attitude will not help you okay so the same thing goes for the developers that right? training that everybody on the team is same there is nobody is superior there is no inferior job so positive attitude being a team player now blaming dev is something that i have seen in the past but i have seen people improve on it as they get more maturity in the project you should be a good team player don't try to blame someone for a defect right when a defect comes it's a team defect it's a defect on the project not individually which means that a defect has come yes developer missed it qa missed it uat missed it everybody missed it so be a team player don't try to blame around each other and that will not take you anywhere all right now let's talk little bit about the career growth in manual testing so career growth in manual testing there are multiple levels right if you are a fresher you would probably be a qa analyst right you review the test cases test data that are given to you you execute them manually report the bugs then after certain years of experience you become senior qa that means you get more understanding about the project the system the tools and the cycle you are able to determine identify bugs way before based on your experience then you progress to qa team coordinator to qa lead then after 8 to 10 years of experience you might be anywhere between uh, an architect or an associate manager with 14 plus years you will be likely a test manager and if you cross over 15 to 18 years of experience you will likely be a senior test manager and from there on you can go to vp and ceo level as well now all of these timelines that i have put together are based on my experience some of you are more aggressive i know so you can jump the roles and the growth much faster as well so it's all based on your attitude your growth your hard work 
thank you so much for joining in today's episode i hope this particular episode clears all your doubts all your basic understanding of manual testing in the next episode i am going to cover about the automation series and the basic uh, of uh, automation like the career path the myths misconception the technical skills the non technical skills and much much more please do ask me your doubts in the comment section please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as always thank you so much for your support and encouragement to my channel thank you so much see you in the next episode